Hey, welcome, Storm Nation. Wow, do we have a treat for you today. Um, again, welcome, Pit Nation, 10 in the Pit Pro Shop. Thank you for joining us. We had to put off two days broadcast so that a good friend of mine could finish out his 18 holes of golf. So let's join in the famous, one of my best friends, Norm Duke. Welcome to the show, Norm. Hi, Brad. Nice to be here. It, it takes me two days to play around the golf. That's how bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the women and children back when I'm playing golf. Is all I say. Would, would you Would you call yourself one of the? Are, are you a duffer or are you pretty decent? What's your handicap? Oh man, I've been going the other way. In fact, uh, I now have a net that I set up. I built you know on the back porch. And uh, I go to the driving range every day because I'm just sick of it, you know. But it, you know, I'm getting out of, I'm getting out of the blues with the with the golf, you know. It just hasn't been my friend here lately. Well, but, uh, I, I haven't been able to play that much over the last uh, couple of years, and it isn't even nice enough up here to be able to play today. It got up to a, in the high 60s today here, and uh, it would have been a nice day to play. But I don't have any money to go play. <laughs> That's a that's a that's a warm front for you guys, in the '60s. Well, it, you you haven't been up here in what a few years, right? What, what's what's it, the closest we get up here now? The last time I I was there was Smell Norm year. That was the last time I've been in Lockport. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> Smell Norm. We we ended up playing golf with with uh, with a friend of mine, and uh, Norm was in the cart, and the guy he was riding with. Well, you tell the story. He stuck a, well, stuck a sign on you or something, right? Well, the thing was, after day one, we have this dinner. So I show up at the dinner, and everybody's got jacket and tie and stuff like that. And so Lisa comes over, and she goes, Norm, I want you to meet you know, all my friends. And, wow, you smell dynamite. <laughs> so from that moment, she would take me to all of her girlfriends in the building and say, you got to smell Norm. You wouldn't believe this. And they would smell me, and they'd go, oh, my gosh. You smell so good. So the next morning, Polly, God rest his soul, he he pats me on the back and puts a sign on my back says, "Smell Norm, five bucks." <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I have the sign, so I couldn't. It was probably an hour or so before I even realized there was something on my back. But everybody's laughing at me. So the end of the story is, I get on the plane, I'm going home, and I'm thinking, man, I was smelling good this week, you know. What What were you wearing? Was it Was well, it just I, your your normal? Uh, your, well, your body odor you, is just that pleasant or what? No, I'm about to tell you. I was thumbing through the flight magazine on the way home. And I went, there's the stuff. It was in an ad. And it was for women. It was it was perfume is what I was wearing. <laughs> what did you do? Rip the page out on the way home no, and rub it no, all no, over no. you? No, the stuff was an SB bag. You know, you get this big bag in the SBs where you get all these, these gifts. And, and it, it, it didn't say whether it was for men or women. And I, I just assumed because I want it, not my wife. <laughs> that, that it was, Yeah, so I was really happy with, with the way I smelled until I read that. And I was so embarrassed. I, I, I was throwing the pages. <laughs> so it, it's funny to, to that point. Uh, Norm just mentioned it. The ESPY Awards, the the big award show mm -hmm. that raises money for um, the Jimmy V Foundation. Right. I was fortunate enough; I was nominated in two thousand four, and boy, they fly you out there first class, and and you get this big uh, care package bag, big yeah. gift bag, and any company that's anybody out there in California, they end up donating to this bag. That bag worth of worth of gifts is somewhere valued between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars. And that was back in 2004. I got Converse All-Star shoes in yeah. there. I had uh, free LASIK eye surgery if I would have right. needed it. Uh, free massages. Make? Free uh, massages woman, for a year from this. Woman's from perfume. This, <laughs> you all kinds of stuff. Woman's perfume. That you, it, but if you don't know it's woman's perfume, how would you then how, yeah, how do you know? Is there, is there a distinct difference to women's and men's all, perfumes? All I know is I smelled of it the very first time, and I thought, yeah, that's not bad at all, man. <laughs> they, they, they go first class and all out. And I'm dousing, and, boy, I was loving life until, until I saw that ad, and I was so embarrassed. All, all because of an SB. How many times have you won the SBs? Uh, five times, yeah. Jeez. 
Yeah, just name them all. I'm proud to say that I didn't even know that, and and I didn't even vote for you. I didn't even know that I was supposed <laughs> yeah. to vote for you, so you would have won easier. Yeah, appreciate those, those you. Times. <laughs> if it had been a close run, I'd have called you and asked for some help. <laughs> I'd have said, you and Michelle got to got to log on separately. So you've gotten some pretty cool things in those gift bags, right? Oh my gosh, you're right. They're they're so valuable, and you you don't even you take all the stuff that the SB bag has in it. And you think that's not bad. Oh no, no. Then you get the envelopes that never end of uh, go online and get uh, 25 pairs of underwear free. Go get uh, Reebok, go get Under Armour, go get, and all you do is log on and tell them your size and they send stuff. It's crazy. So what size underwear do you wear? <laughs> yeah, not very big. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one one of the neatest things that I had in that gift bag, and we actually we, we still use it today, Michelle and I, is they were these kick butt surround sound speakers, oh, a yeah. whole sound system, and we hooked it up to the TV set, and it's like, whoa, wow, you have it. Little stands to go in the back and all that stuff. We we still use that uh, today, and that's you know, I don't even know what what name brand that they are at all, right? But, um, a uh, bottle of wine every month from one of these wine companies mm -hmm. up in Napa Valley. So you get the wine of the month club. They automatically send it to you. We got this this whole uh, bar stocked full of stuff. It was this whole brand of of flavored vodkas. And so, you know, you get home, you fill out the little uh, it's like a little uh, postcard right. that you got to fill out and send in. And then before you know it, you got the UPS guy making three or four trips back to his truck delivering your all yeah. these bottles of wine or vodka or whatever it was. Yeah. So those gift bags, those are pretty cool. Yeah. And you say to yourself, is, is this what the sporting world gets? Because, you know, we're bowlers. We're, we're kind of piggybacking on those people for the SB bag. Thank you very much. At, uh, NFL and NBA. Now, but, do they, do they put you up at the same hotel every year? No, Lord, no. And first, uh, the first SB I, I went to was 1995. It was the very first SB's award. Th those were in New York. And then we've gone to California most of the years. Uh, a few times uh, I, I did stay in the same hotel, but uh, it's sometimes you're not even uh, with some of the heavy hitter uh, uh, type athletes, you know. Well, I'm going to tell you what, the, the, the one year that I was fortunate enough to be nominated uh, we stayed at the Mondrian Hotel mm -hmm. in in Hollywood or or L.A. or wherever it was. Right. And wow, was it a first class hotel? And the one whole floor, I want to say it was like the ninth or the tenth floor, that was designated as like a like a VIP floor. Right. Where right. You could go up there in the morning and you could have breakfast. I sat there and I'm eating breakfast right next to Dr. J. Julia Serving. He was yeah. one of my heroes. He was there. Ended up playing golf with Joe Namus sat there and talked to um, Tom Brady and right. uh, Peyton Manning. Um, gosh, and, and if I remember correctly, we ended up, we had one of the nights, uh, they had a big party at the Playboy Mansion. Oh, I didn't get any of that Playboy Mansion. We anybody. went no, to the no, Playboy no. Mansion when they had whatever it was, Friday night fights at, out in the backyard of the Playboy Mansion. So there Michelle and wow. I were waltzing <laughs> around at the Playboy Mansion and she didn't I, go topless on us, did she? <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to go into full detail. Um, I tell her I said, by the way, I went, I took a nosedive right in the middle of the grotto. Oh, really? No, I'm only kidding. But it was pretty fun. It was pretty cool to see where some of those stories that you hear, the old Hollywood stars that they get to go hang out. And if only for that little segment of times, that, that, that couple days that we were out there. You know they do. They they treat you great, and uh, and and it is. It's it's too bad that that you know, bowlers the, aren't treated that way. You know the best part about that over the years is that all the athletes, every single year, all the athletes doesn't matter what sport you're in, they treat you identically. They do all of it. Doesn't matter whether uh, this guy's making forty million dollars a year and you can't pay attention. They yeah. treat you the same. And their their admiration for your accomplishments are so evident that you feel as if you're part of the the whole thing. You actually are. I mean, we are we are bowling. Um, but when Michael Vick is right next to you, and I, I got to watch Danica Patrick sign her GoDaddy contract while I was in that area. You're talking about the uh, uh, the what is it called the the Grotto? 
Yeah, no, no, no. Oh. The grotto. <laughs> I thought you were in the grotto with Danica. No, it was the hospitality. Thinking, wow. nah, the hospitality oh. room. We were having breakfast, and there she is. She's talking to the people with GoDaddy. Sure enough, about six months later, I see her in the commercials and all that. I thought, dang, man, should have talked to them people. <laughs> you know, my my claim to fame is people just ask me, it's the Hoosier, the, the Hoosier daddy. I don't get the the go daddy thing at all. <laughs> you wouldn't. <laughs> oh, what else? What else could we talk about? Jeez, uh, ain't got any questions so far. Oh, Josh Nowak, uh, the the Josh part of the Brad and Josh show. He and I own Ten in the Pit Pro Shop. Just to get that. you up to speed, um, his wife Christina, you had her in tears. Last year, when you won, I think when you beat was it was it when he beat Jason Belmonte, um, when you made the four nine split and and it oh, yeah. didn't you didn't even skip a beat. You made the four nine and you just gave a little fist pump and you went back to work and ran through the finish line and you won. You had me in tears. You had Josh's <laughs> wife in tears. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Christina you, don't even watch bowling. Yeah, Christina doesn't even watch bowling. She just and loves he, underdogs. That's what it is. If you're an underdog, you're a, yeah, she's on the train. Well, what a what a special day that was being able to win. I mean, you know, you get to a point to where I mean, even I, I'm there now. You know, you wonder, will I ever make another show? Will I ever get to win another title? You know, is 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 that are those times over? And then last year, man, you came out of nowhere. I qualified right next to you in Jonesboro. And uh, what you were doing on the, you got the long pattern on the one lane, the short pattern on the other yeah. lane, what you were doing, backing it in. And, and man, it was so great to watch, Norm. It really was. And the fact Thank that you. I get to bowl on the same lanes with you, being this little kid from Lockport, New York, growing up, I grew up in a little town called Newfane, New York. And, and I used to bowl next to all the, all the guys in my hallway. I would set up a little score sheet at the end of my hallway and when you guys would be on bowling, it would be you, Wayne Webb, Marshall Holman. I actually bowled against you the day that you won your first title. I got the little <laughs> score sheet there at the end of the hallway. You're throwing the shots. And then, whoop, okay, I get to bowl my first frame. And I used to bowl against you guys. Here I was, you know, whatever, 12, 13 years old and bowling against you guys still at that time in, in my hallway of all things. So what an honor it is to be able to get to know you now, to call you my friend, Um well, Brad, that's the same thing that that I did when I was a kid. You know, I thought I was the only one in the world that went through their their uh, grade school hallway doing your little bowling motion, you know. And, uh, you know, if I'd have known how how stupid I looked, I probably wouldn't. I didn't care. I didn't. I wanted to bowl so bad that I would do it without a ball right in the middle of, of the grade school hallway. And I thought I was the only cheesy, cheesy guy that would do things like that. And then when I, I went on tour, I, I learned that that's what everybody does. Norm, we all do Listen, that. I got one better for you. In, in the little old Catholic church in New Fane, New York, I was raised in a very Catholic church. Uh, there I would be seven, eight years old. While everybody was taking communion, I'd be out in the middle of the aisle bowling. I'd be doing my bowling set all the way right straight up the aisle, right there in the middle of church. You couldn't and wait for church to be over so you could go bowling. I I, I was practicing. The, yeah. the 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 our, uh, our our priest at the time, his name was Father Stanton. He ended up going all the way out. Hey, because my dad, my dad was a famous bowler as well. You remember my dad Nin? Um, he he he'd say in front of the whole the whole group there. Uh, at church. Hey, wow, well, you got another star there, huh, Nin? And everybody would laugh. Ha, ha, ha. And there I was just doing my little thing in my little plaid pants and my little <laughs> co collared shirt that came way out here. The, the little Munzingwear the, logo right here. Yeah. Yeah. The whole deal, man. I'd be right there in the middle, right in the middle of, of church, bowling up the middle aisle of church. It's crazy. Crazy the things we used to do. Uh, all right. Back to Christina Nowak. She just put a comment up here, said, I'm absolutely obsessed with this guy. Ah, uh uh, so, Christine, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, you got to understand, though, you know, when uh, uh, the, the pictures of you next to Wes Malott, when you guys win, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're well, I got to look at my screen here. OK, so Wes Malott his is right kids, here. His kids are bigger than me and they're not even 12 years old yet. So, Well, the thing is, is that Josh, Josh Nowak is even bigger than Wes Malott. So you can imagine Christina Nowak, she's obsessed with you. Little does she know 
little could, does she know about giving you a hug, what that would be all about. Oh, she'd be, she, he, he could put me in his pocket. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like a ball marker for him. <laughs> Golf. Yeah. Golf ball. Exactly. All right. What do we got? We got a question over here. I can't see. It's in the glare. It's in the glare here. What's the any memory? Wow, this is a good question. Uh, many of the viewers that we have today, they're from local Ten in the Pit Pro Shop customers, and uh, some of them want to know: Hey, is there any memories that you have from coming up here and competing here in Buffalo? Did you ever bowl back in the day? Um, mm -hmm. The uh, it, it was the senior tour and the the younger tour, the over under doubles back here. I bowled the uh, over under doubles. I'm not so sure I ever did it in Buffalo, but uh, yeah, Rochester and Buffalo. Uh, I don't know how far Rochester is from y'all. Is that close? Yeah, it's only just down the road, about an hour down the road. So you bowled yeah. at Marcel's Olympic Bowl, right? And then here at Thruway Lanes in Buffalo uh, before it closed. So yeah, um, Marcel's place. I got three victories in his place. So yeah, I, I you have... won three times at Marcel's. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. And one time, you know, it was it was uh, a known that whenever I won, uh, I'd like to do a a double shot of crown roll right before the interview. So you're fresh off of, you know, and I'm sorry about that for the kids, but that was just the celebration. Well, <laughs> I was on the hammer staff back then. And uh, and so Dennis Baldwin, hammer. he would bring me a double shot. And then Marcel, of course, he knew about it, too. So he'd bring me a double shot. And then there'd be some scorekeeper. She'd know. I'd go into the press room. And there'd be like a Crown Royal factory right there in front of me. How'd yeah, I you'd be walking up to the camera in the interviews. Yeah. You'd, be, you'd be swaying back and forth. <laughs> yeah, you're like, your one was one, one shot on my request. And your two, I had a couple of them. And I didn't have to say anything. And your three, I had like a six pack of those things. And I, I couldn't even do them, you know, because we were about to go on camera. But that, when you say, are there any memories? Oh, my gosh, there's so many. In fact, must be because there was a, a reoccurring dream I used to have that I never could get to my pair. So I'd come out of the paddock and and a bowling ball would fall out of the bag and I'd get it. And then all of a sudden my shoelace would come under and I have to get through the crowd. And and before I know it, I, I'd be five, six frames behind everybody else and I'd wake up and I'd be sweating. And that was always at Marcel's event. I would always be in his facility when I had that dream. And so I get to think about him a lot <laughs> with those mornings when you wake up two or three hours too early because you're having this nightmare that you can't get your bowl. Usually, Brad, you know it. That's when you're bowling your best is yes. you have these dreams at night that you think, wow, why did I have that? And I can't uh, stop thinking about, you know, some of those dreams that I had uh, <laughs> with, with a kid. And, and even still now, you know, I, I, I think I think life on the low or on the uh, on the road, it. You know, it has its highs and low moments, certainly. Um, a lot of people think, wow, it's great. You get to be a professional bowler. But, man, it's not easy living life on the road. Sometimes you wake up and, and you look at the ceiling and, you know, you don't even know where you are. And, oh, man, all right, yeah, I'm in uh, some Holiday Inn somewhere in, in, in Tennessee. Yeah, in <laughs> Tennessee. You know, <laughs> you know um, so, yeah, we've been fortunate enough to be able to do this our entire life. But then at the same time, you know, give a little insight about about what it's like those weeks that you don't pull that well. Well, I found that uh oh, I found that uh, when I was single, it was hard to beat the tour life. Now, I mean, well, you finish bowling, you get three more days off. OK, you're in Rochester. OK, you find your way to New York City for three days off. That's kind of what what we thought about is, OK, where's the next stop? What's in between? And. and Oh gosh, we had so much fun, uh, and I traveled a lot with uh, with Voss at the time. He was uh, so creative in his way to pick something for us to do for the off times. And then uh, you know, when you get married, then it becomes wow, how much time do I have to spend away from my family now? And you know, so Karen uh, traveled with me for a couple of years when we were first married, and that was so wonderful. Uh, but then when the kids come, uh, in my case, the, uh, my child came, you got to get them home and you got to get them stable. You got to get them something that they know exactly what they're waking up to every day. And then it becomes a lonely life.
far, far uh, players. The worst thing you can do is miss the cut because then you either have to spend a lot more money to get back and, uh, and, and more to get, you know, to and from the tour, or you have to stay out there and, and just live in your, in, in sulk really, because we care about our bowl and we don't like missing cuts and it's, it works on us. So uh, I, I enjoyed the tour a whole lot more at the early, early part of my career, but I'm so much more effective in my late part, probably because there's not much to do in between now. <laughs> you know, and and uh, the incentives to bowl good are so much more because you don't want those those days of nothing to do. You know, you both of us get the questions. Uh, okay, you got one shot in the tenth. It comes down to that final shot. You got to pick somebody else to throw it other than yourself. Right? Who do you have throw it? You know, your life depends on it. Um, wow! You've been my guy, man. Uh, you, I have. Oh, you you, you have. Been- You've been dying reoccurring. Well, you know, because I got to tell you, no, seriously, because I got to tell you, because I've watched you and it's not always like, okay, in basketball, who do you want taking that final shot? It's in my book, it's Michael Jordan, man. Jordan, and, you know, yeah. the, the documentary documentaries that's out now. I mean, it's just so fantastic. The last dance. And, yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so awesome. But your famous move of doing your who, 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 that I just, I love that. I've seen it so many times, whether, and I've seen you do it against me, which kind of pissed me off, but I've, <laughs> you, you've done it against me to be able to win. Um, having said that. Who, who people, would be mine? Yeah. Who would be Are yours? You be, well, I am. you know. It's, it's, it's not fair because I built so much against the guy when I was in my teens. But Gary Dickinson, you didn't wow. let him get a chance. You, you can't let him have a chance. And then uh, fast forward until I was on, on the road, on the tour. Dave Ferraro struck in the 10th against me every time, bar none, bar none. He never missed. He never missed and he never lost. Once on television against Ferrar, I got like the front seven, you know, I'm a bad man. <laughs> and then I left a 10 pin and freaked me out because now I look up and, and we're even. And I missed the 10 pin. He strikes out when he wins, I lose. I'm just like, how do you get that much control over somebody else's bowling? He, he, it's like I was his little puppet. <laughs> he could tell me when to wash out. He could tell me when to, yeah. So it Ferraro, was voodoo. It was he voodoo. had a little voodoo thing. He had a little doll yeah. of you, and he was sticking you, sticking you with the yeah, doll. And, and uh, Tony, it... Tony Westlake. Now I tell you what, he could throw it for me anytime. I, I'll take that right there, any day, any day. I'll take Tony Westlake. But who trumps all of them? Of course, Belmonte, because he has usually about twelve boards at the break point to hit, and every <laughs> bird dog. At least Westlake and Ferraro would flat ten when they threw it bad. <laughs> not, not Jason. He just strikes. That's it. You know, uh, some of these some of these people here are throwing out questions here. So Josh is our Josh is our designated question guy. So he writes the question down that he wants answered and comes and holds it right here. So if you see my eyes like going Edwards. up, he's the he's the statistician, the Mike Edwards of this show. I like it. Yeah, exactly. So we we get to the point to where okay, now you've won how many titles? Is it forty? And 40. how many senior titles? Five. Wow. So some people want to know if there is one uh, or talk about some of your memories from your most, most uh, best victories that you've had. Is there just one that's your best one? Oh, Lord, no. Lord, no. Um, The the U.S. Open, you know, I'd I'd already had a couple, three majors before then, and they they, they were so epic. But to win for the for the Grand Slam, I can't tell you how hard that is. That's hard because you know it. Just like right now, I need a win in the Players' Championship to get the Super Slam, to have all of them. Oh, I know that before six months prior to going there. I train for that event, specifically that event now. Uh, So to win when you know that is the only one. It's not like you can go out there for 10 events. All right, let's get one, you know. No, win at will. And I remember this year after qualifying, I was I was in the lead uh, in that event. I had Jason Belmonte by one pin. I was so nervous I couldn't sleep. I had three days left to go in the tournament. I didn't even, you know, <laughs> we just getting started good in day three, you know. But uh, the the to to make a bucket for the Grand Slam that was pretty huge. Yeah, 
I'll never forget that spare. I'll never forget how it happened, how I knew I would just thrown away um, the U.S. Open. I'd thrown it away. I needed a mark. I left a bucket. Well, you lose <laughs> because it, it's a bucket. That's why. To, to spare that bucket for that event, that's amazing uh, to me. I'll never forget that one. And then Mika missing a 10 pin and then rolling on the ground. Uh, I can hear Josh laughing. Josh, uh, or is that Tim? Who was that laughing? That, that was Tim, uh, yeah. but both of them got a big chuckle out of it. Tim, I was sitting there in that seat, and, uh, and I thought I'd gotten punked, you know, because, well, Mika, he's never going to miss a 10 pin. He, never, ever. And he misses it, and I thought, oh, he'll get that over. And I'm sitting in the seat, and that's what I'm thinking is, all right, he'll get, he'll get that over. And then he lays down on the ground, you know. I went, ooh, maybe he doesn't get it over, you know. <laughs> so I had to figure out, did I just win? Or, yeah, yeah, that, I'll never forget that moment when I said, I'm, I've just been punked. Well, you know, I remember distinctly the look on your face. That's what I remember from that missed spare. That's arguably the most famous missed spare ever. Wow. I remember the look on your face and it was. And I'm thinking he, they're punking me. He's going to get that over. There's going to be a big joke. I couldn't joke. believe it. I, I couldn't believe it because you're right. Because Mika, you know, to this day is still one of the best spare shooters that I've ever mm -hmm. seen. Um, and then, you know, for me, uh, as the one we just talked about a few minutes ago was when you just won last year, you know, you, I mean, yeah, you did it, you know. well, you know, people think that it's always the ones that you win that are the most memorable, but I will tell you, uh, I didn't even make the show in this event, but uh, to win three majors in a row was something I got to experience. Uh, that uh, It's incredible to do something like that. But then Las Vegas for that quarter million dollars first place, uh, Mika ended up winning that, by the way. Mm -hmm. When I got there, the media all of a sudden had ratcheted up to a level I had never seen before in practice day. Um, I'm going for my fourth. I'm getting the Hall of Fame in three days. So I was negotiating schedules and I was doing things that you don't normally do in your routine. Uh, but I will remember those four days for the rest of my life. And I didn't do that. I did make the finals, but I didn't play to my best. And uh, partly because the pressure that you put on yourself. Sure. And I will, I will never forget that because those are the learning moments, you know. When you're bowling an event later on, it doesn't have to mean as much as that one did. You just have to remember what it was that prevented you from excelling. What about that emotion? What about this pressure? What about that? And then you can, you can make uh, uh, similarities with all kinds of tournaments now using those. So the experience was such that I learned a great, great deal. Probably one of the reasons that I'm still winnable is because of those losses and and the the lessons you learn from a loss are always so much more valuable to you than one of a win you win well, there's nothing to learn really you know just slide them over and do it again right yeah the losses they teach you how to play bowling you know how much wisdom i i just in that little story there how much wisdom that comes out of you uh to me is is phenomenal um, some of the things that we try to teach to people is, you know, what is the conversations that are going on in your mind? What is it that you're thinking? Um, the true separation of, of greatness is not how well you throw the ball at all. It has everything to do with what's, what's going on in, inside of your brain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and I've tried to share with so many people, there's, there, there's an art to being able to win. To there be sure able is. to navigate through it, uh, whatever whatever it is, not get too emotionally high or too emotionally low. So talk a little bit about that. What What is the real art to being able to win? Well, there's no real art. There's a, a bunch of uh, puzzle pieces that you have to align in such an artful manner. I remembered, uh, you know, my first tournament victory was only my ninth event. And I got Mark Roth, who I just eliminated, sitting in the front seat. Uh, uh, you know, back then we had the alternate chair. So he was making like $500 to sit there and watch the show live. <laughs> I put him there. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> and I'm bowling against Earl Anthony. And none of this phased me, really. 
It was just, hey, dude, go do your job. And so we went. But then I remember Bowen Marshall Holman one time. This is when it got when it came to me. Is that I could not play my very best. And I said, something's up. What's up? It took me a little while, but it was that Marshall Holman match that said, something's up, find it. Gotta find it, or otherwise this is gonna hurt. And what it was is the person behind me was so prolific in my mind that I am sitting next to them watching me bowl <laughs> instead of me bowling. So instead of me thinking from the from the approach that direction, I was thinking from the approach backward. I was watching somebody else watch me and you know, I wonder what they think. I mean, is, is this, I had to learn, hey bro, <laughs> I don't care who you're bowling today. It doesn't matter if, it, if it's LeBron James that walks in, I want you to step on that approach and go that direction, not that one. You have to learn things like that about yourself. Uh, evidently, earlier, it wasn't Mark or Marshall that affected me that way. Probably because those are the two that I bowled every day of my life getting to that point in my imagination. I didn't imagine bowling Marshall. Bowling Marshall, there was a different scenario. I had to learn that and I had to say, well, look, don't put anybody on such a pedestal that it then affects your it affects your play. I don't care how good or how bad. And I had to do that on other other uh, when when you beat all of the great players, but then somebody you don't even know their name, you can't bowl 180. I had to realize you can't put them above you or below you. Either one of them are, 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 are the worst. You go play bowling, go do your job, and everybody's exactly like you. If they win, they're ahead of you. If they lose, they're behind you. And it's just that simple. Uh, things like that. You have to learn how to navigate yourself. What buttons do you push? And some players will come off the lanes with a four bagger and I'll get up and I'll say, wouldn't it be great? You know, to myself, not out loud, but I'll say to myself, wouldn't it be great if you even had a say in the matter? <laughs> you know, where I'm saying that four bagger doesn't even exist to me. And then another guy comes off with an open that just gives you the lead and you go, wow, I wonder if I can stay ahead of him. You have to learn that, look, if you're not a, if, you, if, if you're not a man's man every day, you can write your ticket home. You've got to find a way to put yourself in a position where you can defend yourself. It's like fight or flight. And I had to learn. I had to learn that, you know. Otherwise, you're always the weakling. You know, I, I don't want to be the weakling. I mean, I, you know, tell me, guys. Okay, you guys are hearing this here, Josh. I'm, I'm referring to Josh and Tim sitting right here listening to this. Isn't this awesome? I mean, I kind of forgot that we were doing a show for a minute. Like, I'm just sitting here staring at the screen, so sucked into can you, it. Like, this can is you awesome. hear? I, I don't know if you can hear what Tim's saying. He said, yeah, he said, I'm actually hear. sitting here thinking about, or I, I forgot that we were actually doing a show. I'm just sitting here staring at the screen, listening to Norm Duke say things that, you know, I mean, I, I hear Michael Jordan say the same sort of, mm -hmm. same sort of things in that documentary. We've, We've heard, um, you know, Tiger Woods in his interview, you know, the Masters was supposed to be just a couple weeks ago, and they ended up replaying last year's Masters yeah, yeah, no. uh, for this year. And I didn't get a chance to see it, but later on on the Golf Channel, they had that press conference, mm -hmm. and they kept playing that press conference over and over. I watched the damn thing three different times. The same press conference, yeah. watching it three times and listening to Tiger Woods. And and it's not even so much what he was thinking about as it was how he thinks. How he thinks. And and that's what he's training himself. And folks, for y'all that are watching, there's another little thing that I, that I recognized is, let's say you're going to t TV on Saturday and Friday night. What do I do now? I study. I study who owns the bowling center. Who's the sponsor? Who are who am I going to get to thank tomorrow? Because every time I don't know, I don't play like I'm capable of winning. I don't play like I'm prepared to win. But little things like that is to know if you win today, say hello to Stacy because she's hosting you today. Things like that matter to me. I don't know why. I can't explain why. But if I know, I'm... I'm, I, f I feel like I, I'm more um, I'm more polished, that all my buttons are together, and that I'm ready to win. I've trained to win. 
and that training well, it's, went it's all the like, way there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's kind of like you're, you're, I, I've always said, I, I, I feel like it was a whole lot easier to, to strive and reach for getting to the tour or being one of the best than it is to stay one of the best, you know, yeah. and because, because you're always reaching and always striving and that's where I'm going. I'm going, I'm going to get there. And it's kind of like what you're saying, you know, you, you end up making the show at the beginning of the week. Let's face it. That's the goal, right? That's because the goal. all the yep. pins are away. So you work so hard to get to the show and then you get on the show and before you know it, wow, you, wait a minute. The thing that got me here was the striving, was the was the working. And now I'm on the show. It's like what you're saying is, is that, yeah. hey, I still have to work. I got work to still do on that show. You know, who am I going to thank once I right. get this work done? And and it does. It sets you in a different mindset. So, wow. I mean, yeah. so, you know, hopefully so, I'll make another show and, oh, and you'll definitely I'll be using it. that. I'll be using that. You'll be you'll be making that. I'll tell you another thing. I get these I get these uh, shortcuts where I say, okay, when did this pro this is how you handle that. This is how you handle that. So once once I got on the show and and I'm freaking out. I mean, I'm sweating in places I don't know that exist. I know <laughs> that there is. It's not it's not an it's not a win I miss. It's how much are you going to miss at this point? Okay. So I'm sitting there and this was the day I learned it. I said. What in the world are you doing? Why are you this way? You're scared. So I'm answering myself. I'm saying you're scared. You're nervous. Why? Look at, and I pointed at the guy in bowling. I said, how do you think he feels? And that relaxed me. It flipped me and taught me how now to behave when I get that way. Because now I look at them and I go, wow, how does that? He looks just as bad as me or she. Sometimes it's a she. They're just as scared as me and just pulling them down to my level that we're both scared. We're both nervous. We're both handling the same thing. Now gives me a power of, okay, it's not that I'm nervous. It's a, it can I handle it better than that person? And sometimes I'll even say, how do you think he feels? He's playing against Norm freaking Duke. I use those little, little shortcuts, even though that that's not the most humble statement in the world. But neither is, hey, wouldn't it be great if you had a say in the matter when somebody's got to buy 40 pins, you know? Well, These things are little tricks. You got you to gotta have them. I, I had made 13 TV shows prior to that day that I was finally able to break through. And, and I remember at that time, um, Rick Benoit was my mentor and still is my, my mentor. Uh, huge help in my career. I remember saying to him, you know, geez, I, I'm going to have to bowl Walter Ray and Wes Malak on the TV show, like, holy cow. And he looked at me and he said, wait, wait hold on one second. They got to bowl you. And it flipped it for me. It was the same sort of thing, same sort of mindset, right. you know, nothing really changed. My job didn't change. It just put me in a different frame of mind to be able mm -hmm. to do that work that had to be done that day. All right. Another question. But so, one, one, one last thing to cap that sure. off. The other people, the people that you're bowling, they see that negative. They see that weakness. They see, or they see that confidence. They see that, 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 uh, that ability to stand in and fight. They know, and it, it works on them as well. They see weakness in you. They're going to play better than they're capable of. If they see strength, typically they, they come down a little bit. So they say, never let them see you sweat. Ah, heck, that's the, one of my favorite there. No matter how bad or weak or small I feel, uh, and many times it's it's helpless is how I feel. Never let them see it, dude. This is awesome stuff. You know, I mean, I'm I'm proud. I'm proud to be able to to know, uh, and and I'm speaking to the people that are watching now. I'm so proud to be able to know some of the people that you know I used to have on that pedestal that that I used to aspire to be with. I I, I Walter Ray. Um, good friend of mine now. Yeah. I remember sitting on Walter Ray's couch after we had just gotten done playing golf and I was eating a sandwich and I ended up looking over to him and I was like staring at him. And, and, <laughs> and, and he, he looked over at me and he goes, what? What? <laughs> what? And I said, I, I'm sitting on Walter Ray Williams' couch. Like, okay, yeah, I get it. You know, we're a good, we're friends now. We just got done playing golf. This is all well and fine, but holy crap. I'm on Walter really, and, and and I feel the same way with, with with you. I feel the same way, you know. Dal Ballard being our, one of our staff reps out on tour, 
feel the same way whenever I'm in his presence. I used to watch you. Part of my dreams, part of my career has had to do with, with watching you, you know, and bowling okay. against you in that hallway. So you're, you're one of the guys. And now here I am. I just turned 50. Yeah. So now I get to go on the, fifth, the, the senior tour. And I'm actually so excited to go on the senior tour, not so I get to compete in more tournaments, but so that I don't got to bowl against the rev rate guys. I get to go bowl against guys <laughs> yeah. with the lower rev rates again. Like yeah. I, I get to be be able to match up <clears throat> match up easier to the transitions that are going to be out. So how much more difficult is it out on the senior tour? That's the question that I would have for you. Well, the the problem that I have on the senior tour is the format. You know, you, you can lead by 700 pins after two long, grueling days, and then you wake up at day three and you're, you're even. So to lose to a guy that's five or 600 pins behind you, and you lose by a pin, and now you look up and that person has you by 31 pins now. And it's something that, you know, when we talk about building cheats and, and uh, fabricating ways to get through something, I have to try to fabricate a way to get through that because I, I never have we been in a scenario, uh, well, I'll say never, seldom, once a year maybe, where they take all of your two days worth of work away. I got a body of work here. That's what we're used to is this is my body of work. Oh, no, no, none of that counts. Okay, so that makes it a lot harder to win because now you have to win it twice. Now you have to win it the third time because there's a show. <laughs> so I have found it so brutal mentally out there that I don't, I don't enjoy that. I, I just don't. Uh, I also find that the guys are such great people. The, the senior tour players are so very wonderful. I love them all, but it's hard to hang out with them because they like to talk bowling after they're finished. And I've been on the, the kid tour for four months straight, no, no days off. And then we come straight to the senior tour. I don't want to talk bowling, you know, I just don't. So uh, I find myself uh, by myself a lot. And so I've said, uh, look, until you, you at least pair the regular tour down, then pair the senior tour down. I can't do both. I did that last year. I, I really pressed on both tours uh, and I did quite well on both tours, but it just wasn't a happy time for me because there was just no time off. There was no, sure. there was no downtime. And I got to where uh, you get up one day and you, you think, well, what's putting me here? Well, the, the sport of bowling is. No, it's not. You think it is, but it's actually you that are putting yourself through it, you know. And so uh, as much as you think you're enjoying it and you think that it's bowling against the lesser cow. No, you got to actually average more out there than you do on the kid tour. It's easier to hit the pocket, but it's harder to strike. So I've won well, you, five times in, in six years. OK, five times in six years. I've led 30 more than that, probably. Yeah, it's a harder, it's a harder proposition to win on the senior tour than most people think. Well, and you know, there's a lot of the people around here that that know me that come in and out of, of my bowling center. And of course, they're very supportive and, and excited for me. Mm -hmm. You know, wow, you're gonna go out there and kill them on the senior tour. And I tell them, well, are you kidding me? You don't realize I still got a bowl against Norm. I still got a bowl against Amleto. Walter Ray still no slouch. You know, and they all can strike when they need it. All the one, every senior tour player that's anybody can strike when they need it. They've exactly. gotten past all of that. So it's not one of those where you say, all right, just get to the tenth and they'll falter. No, no, you get to the tenth and now it gets game on. Yeah. So there are so many things, Brad, you're gonna really love about that senior tour, and that's one of them, is that you're bowling against very, very capable individuals. They just don't have the rev rate. Do the, can they bowl? The, in most cases, they bowl better than the kids. The kids don't have to bowl as good as the seniors because they have that rev rate. Mm -hmm. uh, they can get away with missing spares. They can get away with missing a move. They can get away with a lot of things like an uh, elbow in it because they get a bird dog. No, no. Uh, it, it, it is a different animal. That's what I'll say about it. It's a different animal. It's still pro bowling. It's still very hard. It's still very, very hard. And with that, enjoy the heck out of it. So what do you think? Are we going to be able to get have a senior tour this year or what? Yeah, eventually. I think, uh, you know, what I've heard is that Coley Edison has committed to finishing the events that, uh, they, that they've started this year uh, to finish and, uh, well, start and finish a lot of the other uh, 
uh, tournaments that they have been postponing. She even mentioned on her on her on her web page, uh, excuse me, on her uh, podcast, that even if it's finishable in 2021, we're going to try to finish this year. You know that is that is a commitment to the players that means more to me than, than anybody knows because those players out there, they need it. They need the work. Uh, they're just like uh, those of us that are stuck home right now. Uh, we're not, we're not able to, to go and, and work our craft. Uh, she's basically saying out loud, you're going to be able to work your craft. Let's just do it safely. Well, that that's really, you know, the thing for me that I would say uh, the most difficult thing about being shut down now for coming up on, what is this, about the sixth week or something like that? You feel guilty every day, don't you? <laughs> well, I mean, I, no, I'm, I, honestly, I'm, I'm getting, you know, more and more uh, concerned. You know, there, there's no little weekend tournaments to bowl. I was supposed to be out in Florida as we speak, bowling on the senior mm -hmm. tour. This was supposed to be the second stop. You know, not that I'm guaranteed to make a windfall of money, but the point is, is that, being able to be in a situation to where I have a chance to make yeah, money. It's our job. I, I, That's what we do. Yeah. And and, I, and I've and i never in my life been in a situation to where if I was healthy, there was nothing to go bowl. Right. You know, when I, when, when I hurt my wrist, it was a whole different thing. I wasn't capable of being able to go compete. So I was able to shut my brain off from that. But so man, so what are you doing now? Let's say you can't go bowling and uh, you're in New York, so golfing is probably not something you can do all the time. You have a bowling center, right? You can go in and practice, right? Well, I, I haven't really practiced that much, to be honest with you. Um, I, I do our Wednesdays with Brad and Josh, the, the shows, uh, and many of those shows started out being, yeah, I was just going to throw bowling balls down the lane and, and feature this ball, uh, this ball or that ball, and talk about the relationship between the two. Much of what we've we've talked about regarding bowl you or like what you I mean, you teach a lot of the similar stuff like in next level bowling. So it's the same sort of stuff, you well, know, same language. But what and, are you doing physically to stay physically fit? I guess that's my best question. Is you know, I am not. Bowl, we that. I'm telling you, I, I I'm guilty. I, I'm you you caught me. I'm finding myself getting more and more depressed. I'm getting more and more mentally stale. And I got to get moving here and get, well, that get is the doing thing. something. Yeah. I, want, I wanted to ask that because I've been struggling with the same thing. I went a full month, a little more than a month. I didn't have any gumption. I didn't have any willpower. I didn't have any motivation. I didn't have any dates in front of me to look out in front of. So I found myself just like this. So I snapped out of it after about five weeks. And I said, Duke, you got to start training like you were an athlete. And so if, the first day I said, you know, we can't go to the gym and I'd usually do that on a daily basis. So I got on the bicycle and I could barely ride around the doggone block here, you know, before I was huffing and puffing. And, <laughs> and now, now I got me a little, uh, I got me a little track set up where, you know, I, I'm, I'm feel, I feel guilty though. I look at my family and I go, I know I haven't done anything. I know. But I find myself also saying, but what is there to do? You're doing everything. You're doing everything and everybody's asking of you. Stay home, stay safe. That's what they need. So but I'm fighting that a little bit. Are you? I am. I, I really am. I, uh, and, and you're right. There, there's not anything out there, you know, two weeks, a month, six weeks out that I'm getting ready to prepare for. F for years, for years, six weeks prior to whatever tournament was coming up, I would always start out slow. And, and I'd be, you know, I'd bowl a little bit and get games on my hands, start building up calluses, um, start start getting my launch angle straight, that sort of stuff. Maybe get in the gym, get on the treadmill, start getting my heart rate up, um, you know, do some core stuff. So waking up next day, getting out of bed is a little bit easier. And I got to tell you, uh, but I got to hand it to you. I have a very good friend of mine now. Her name is Heather Dorico with Bowl Fit. And she yeah. has built a program for me. And Norma, I got to tell you, um, she's she's reached out to me a couple of times. Just let me know. Hey, listen, I, I'm thinking of you. I put a couple other exercises in there. If you want to get started, just know I'm thinking of you. She's been patient with me. So, you know, nothing but thanks for Heather Dorico. And again, for those of you that haven't uh, learned more about the Bowl Fit program, uh, she's put that together. Uh, a All bowler right. who is a workout fanatic. And and she's just built a great program for herself. So go yeah, check it really out the program. It is. It is. I'm with, sure uh, with it. Is that with Planet Fitness? 
Yep, they uh, Planet Fitness partnered with Heather Dorico and the Bullfit right. program now. So, um, and, and that's been great. Um, wh when I stayed down at Norm's, uh, the king of bowling, where if you remember West Malott bowled yeah. the 300s, and we bowled the king of bowling competition down at the Kegel, um, Kegel Institute down there, uh, I stayed at, at your house. Yeah. And Man, you go right in the one whole room. There's room, Norm's whole workout facility right in his one room of his whole house. So, is there any dust on those on those plates, or you've been dusting off those lately? Well, about uh, I would say three weeks ago, I just said, Norm, go down for just. I don't care if it's one exercise. Just do it, just so you can say you made the stairs. <laughs> you know, uh, and it, you know, I I'm, I just started. About two weeks now, uh, two weeks ago, I make sure every day to uh, to get a burn and to get huffy and to get tired. And, you know, whether it's uh, a little bit of a swim, uh, certainly the workouts, uh, they, they help. Look, when you're on the senior tour, I'm going to tell you, the, the biggest difference in me and the rest of those people out there is the physical condition. Uh, Amleto trumps us all, yes, uh, but that is where my my... I think the largest uh, advantage, and I have an advantage on the senior tour, there's no doubt. I think the largest advantage comes from physical ability. One might think, wow, wouldn't it be your experience or wouldn't it be, if you see how much experience is on that, on that tour? Yeah, it's not. You're not trumping anybody in experience when you go on the senior tour, Dad, no. Uh, so you think, well, is it ability to play all lanes? No, because they can all do that. They can do everything. It's the one area I've said is make certain that when they're tired, that you're fresh. And so I'm get, I'm lending you that advice right now in front of hopefully your uh, your your personal trainer. And uh, well, I'm I'm going to tell you something, Norm. Just as you said that, and not even joking. Just as you said that, okay, then that has to be my why. That I mean. Aside from Michelle and the kids, obviously that's that's why we do everything we do. But hearing you say that, all right, wait a minute. You mean I can gain an advantage and be able to wake up the next day and have a huge advantage over those guys? All right, then sign me up. So I need to get started no matter if we start the senior tour two months from now. How strong and ready can I be physically? Forget throwing balls down the lane. You know as well as I do. We could take off five or six months, mm -hmm. and it only takes us – you know, just a handful of days to get games back on our hand because I've always said it's not how well you're throwing the ball, it's the decisions you're making in the midst of competition. You got to get navigated around and get matched up. Yeah, and, and if you're tired, you don't make good decisions. Exactly. That's it's exactly like a baby right. that gets tired. You know, they just want to whine and cry and and, uh, yeah. and nap. <laughs> well, the the other thing is on on the third day on the senior tour it's likely that if you're in it at the end, you will have bowled at least 16 games. And if you had to start at eight o'clock in the morning, now you're in your 23rd game and it's the most important of the day. Exactly. So uh, I've learned that don't ever take that tour for granted. It's actually as much a requirement on physical ability as the regular tour is. And I look at Amleto, uh, goodness gracious, just, He's inspiring. Even, hey, I won't even let him take his shirt off around me. I just said, no, no, you keep that on right there because none of us want to see that stuff. Well, I got to tell you, I, I roomed with them, Leto, for two years on tour. And every time I was on the phone with my wife, she wanted him to take his shirt off behind me there. Yeah. So she could get a good, good look at that. Right. I mean, I I look pretty good underneath the mess that, that everybody sees, you know. If, if you know what I'm saying, like, I got the six-pack. It's just covered up by a whole boatload of laundry. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit's been called. Yeah, these guys are in the back here. I, I, I call BS. I call BS. Oh, everyone here is that mic sensitive. <laughs> okay. So, listen, here we are. Norm, I, I again, you know, those of you that are watching – uh, we got uh, whatever we got 170 people watching right now, so that's pretty oh, good. It's been fluctuating, fluctuating between. Listen, I got nothing to do, <laughs> nothing, zero. I have nothing on the docket <laughs> right now. So, well, I'll tell you what. If you guys uh, and and we'll continue this. If you guys are all on the on the views right now, Tim's going to monitor how many likes come up right now. If you want us to continue talking with Norm Duke, we can get to some more of your questions. Um, you know, yeah, you where are the questions? 
Send them in. Well, again, I, I I don't know, but if you guys don't want to continue, oh, well, this is a little long winded. Yeah, this kind of stuff. But these conversations back and forth, I love these things. You know, it's not the old normal. Okay, Norm, what's your favorite ball? Well, you know, I like the ball. round one. Yeah, exactly. I like telling the stories. I like busting chops. Um, I like sharing that what my my first year on tour as a as a rookie, my very very first tournament. Now my guy was always Wayne Webb, mm. and you were always my second favorite guy. So it was Wayne Webb and Norm Duke are my two favorites. And lo and behold, as fate would have it, Wayne Webb signed an autograph here in Buffalo during the summer the summer stop. He had just won the tournament of champions the year prior, and he signed that autograph here at, at Thruway Lanes, and I was nine years old. And I didn't go on tour because of all the mega bucks that there was. Right. I ended up bowling my first stop in Albany, New York, and I made the cut my first tournament. I ended up having to bowl my first match against Wayne Webb. And I brought that autograph with me. Oh, and yeah, I remember so, that day. I remember yeah, that day. You exactly. pulled it out of your wallet. <laughs> I pulled it out of my briefcase. I did. And then never, never, never even imagine, okay, now I call Michelle and she says, all right, who do you got to bowl in the next match? And I had to bowl you. So I got to bowl my two favorite guys. Who won? And who won? I beat. I beat uh, Wayne. You had to be Webb to get to me. Who won yeah. between us? You absolutely swiped. You wiped the table with me. You cleaned up. It was all nice and buffed up and everything. I'd like to thank all of you for sticking with me all these years. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, seriously, what, what, what an honor. And, and I remember one other time distinctly um, as far as our interaction with uh, together with you. Friendship aside, you know, you put your shoes on. I put my shoes on. Man, let's go. I mean, that's, I'm ready to go. I don't care if you're Norm Duke or not, right? I mean, that's that's yeah. what we're wired to do. We were at Taylor Lanes, and I think you were up on me three to one, and I came back and pushing it to seven games, and you ended up beating me in the seventh game with one of your punch out, you know, that type of stuff. And I was so sad and demoralized at the end of that match, and you came over to me, and you ended up saying, I just want you to know of all the guys out here, you're one of the guys that I don't want to bowl. And I'm like, wow, Norm, yeah, why, why did you say that? I mean, thank you. And you said, wow, Brad, because you can do so many things. You do so many things well, and there's nothing that I can do to that pattern to be able to intimidate you. You're so, and I, to this day, that's one of the best compliments that I've ever had. And lo and behold, I get to have you on our show now. So, Thank you, Norm. I mean, those are some great, great times. I think you probably remember that match right there at Taylor Lane's there, right? I, I do. I do, because that was the time that they they closed the one half of the place down so that they could just put all of the audience in one spot, and we were right next. Everybody was just lined up. Everybody was right there, yeah. yep. That yeah, yep. was cool, yeah. All right, guys, what do we got for some questions here? Who's better at golf, Norm or Brad? Who's better Brad. at golf, Norm Brad. or Brad? Hey, this is how you know a good golfer. It's when they carry their their towel to the green, you know, to wipe all their stuff off. You know, <laughs> guys like me, we used to, uh, we used to lick on the ball and rub it on our pants. You know, <laughs> he's got the white towel though, so that tells me he's. I got stick. the little white towel. I have the bottom corner of it. Um, he's got um, a caddy. It's got he's water got two on or three. It. He's got a strength trainer with him. He's got like his entourage all following him and stuff. He's got his uh, twin son. You know, my no, son, he's, he's Dylan, hey, you know what? Still, I, I do have to say this. This would be something that nobody else can tell. This is a great story. So my son, Dylan, he qualified for the national junior finals of a huge golf tournament down in Florida. And so Dylan and I jumped on an airplane. And we flew down to Florida. And um, I had tried to set up a time for for Dylan and I and Norm to go play golf, and it just didn't work out. And this guy that I got on right here, Norm Duke, he dropped everything and said, hey, listen, I'd at least, I would at like least to come over and be able to watch Dylan play um, while he's playing. And he did, man. He drove across town, uh, came over, <laughs> and, and watched my son and walked alongside with me and watched my son play. And Norm, still to this day, I'm so grateful for that. Uh, 
And, and I, you know, as a father, you, you want so badly for your son to be able to understand and appreciate who was just watching him that dropped everything that day to come over to watch him. And, you know, I, hopefully one day he'll really be able to grasp just what you did for him. So I appreciate that. Um, thank you again. Yeah, you know what? Th those are those are the things that that uh, are, are easy to forget about is the impact and the the uh, uh, the difference that you can make in others' lives. I was I, I'm afforded that because of of my career, uh, not because of anything else. Just because I'm I'm well known, uh, but being afforded that is also uh, an, a responsibility to know. Hey, look. You choose to either try and make people's lives and try to have an impact, a positive impact on people or not. Um, that's a choice we get every single day. I don't make the right choice every day. Neither do you. Nobody does. But if you wind them all up and just replay them all at once, um, I'm glad to say that I'm, I'm happy that I chose to make somebody's life better more often than I chose not to. Uh, although I do, I wish I had mulligans, you know. I really do. I wish <laughs> I had some all. mulligans. <laughs> Don't we all. all right, give yeah. me another question, guys. We'll, we'll keep this going. Looks like, Norm, we still got 150 people watching. So. <laughs> how long did it take for the towel shot to get that down? Yeah, oh, how, man. how long did it take for you to master uh, I'll that say, towel? So, so uh, I, I got finished uh, in, in Meadowbrook Lanes one late, late night against Gary Dickinson and probably two or three other people, and they had figured out a way to get back to even. So I had the money before and they got back to even and now they're out of here. So, you know, it's only two in the morning, so I'm bored. So James Askins out of Fort Worth, he owns a pro shop now still. He comes over and he says, well, young man, uh, you know, if you're bored, I'll throw one out of a towel. And, uh, you know, I'm sure I can bowl about 130 or 120 out of a towel. I thought, well, you know, bowl at 170. Okay. <laughs> That's what he said. Okay. So he goes down there, bowls about 185. I thought, wow, that's not bad. I said, all right, double or nothing, bowl at 200, because I know you're a lot better than you, you let on. Okay. <laughs> so he goes, he bowls against 200, and he beats me on that. So I doubled it again at like 205 or 210, and darn if he didn't beat me all three times. At that moment, I said, oh, I'll get plenty of money back out of this i'll get plenty in 10 minutes i was i felt like i could bowl against 200 out of a towel i just watched how he did it i watched how he did it and i saw him and by the way the third game he was banking the gutter off with the towel and he's well you know you got i mean people don't realize that um you taught me how to throw the ball out of the towel mm -hmm. and really the trick is the make you got to make sure you have the amount of tension that you have and where you let go of, your, of the tension of your thumb to let the ball fall, right? right. The ball's got to fall. And then it's a lot like, it's just like playing a lane. Yeah, it, it really is. And then whatever direction that you're turning, I got to get in front of you, whatever direction you turn your thumb, and then you let go of that tension, that that ball falls that direction, and that's how you get your rotation on the ball. So Norm Duke taught me how to, how to yeah. do the towel shot. So if you come in here, once all this – once we get to open again, you want to come in here? Yeah, I'll do a couple towel shots for you if you <laughs> if you end up spending some money at our place here. Because well, the thing is, is that uh, I don't know. Probably less than a year later, I was at the uh, in, in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, for the Hoinky Classic, and I couldn't bowl because I was a pro. Uh, so I would have to hang out for three or four or five days because people didn't want to beat me and then scare everybody else off. So they kept saying, uh, we'll play you at the end, Norm. So at the very end, everybody's tired. Nobody wants to play anymore. And I said, well, man, I got to be creative here. So I just thought, well, James Askin taught you exactly how to do it. So I did exactly the same thing he did. Same number, same everything. And the uh, uh, only thing he was doing is we, I, I bowled two game matches. Well, it's hard to bowl two full games out of a towel. You get tired. Your, your, your grip gets tired. So I remember barely went in the first game. In the second game, uh, I, I'm, I'm losing against the number, and I'm losing against the total number. So I get down to about the ninth frame, and I remember leaving a two-pin, and I missed the two-pin. Oh, man, I knew I'd just I'd 
I'd thrown away my only chance to make money. And now I'm going to lose a couple thousand bucks. I just knew it. <laughs> so I move. I'm like playing fifth arrow. It's night time. They haven't dressed the lanes in a week. And I throw this double out of the towel. And I've got the people in Houston that I've always gambled against in the top bleacher row. And they're like, grind on him, Norm. You go. And he's, they're like, oh, he's toying with you when he missed the two pin. You know, I'm toying with him. I, I forced to make myself double. This was the stupidest thing I did. I pack, pack, got maybe $3,500 for the four or five games that I bowled. And I had made that 800 that I lost on day one to James Askin. Thank you, James Askins, for that. But I made good for that within the year. And, you know, then it became my signature shot on uh, the trick shot thing. So thanks, James. I have a good question for you. I don't know if anybody's mentioned it at all. Um, but everybody around here, or I'll say most people around here in the Buffalo area, they have a Mike Newman story. Oh, yeah. And it's very, very difficult for a lot of people to really grasp just how good Mike oh, Newman gosh. was. Yeah. So I want to ask you, because I know back in the day, back especially at the Super Hoinkie, you right. know, Mike Newman would bowl for whatever you wanted to bowl for. If you were there, he didn't back down to anybody. But I do know that many times I know that you and Mike, you, you were acquaintances. You certainly yeah. bowled against each other, maybe with each other. What's one of your most memorable Mike Newman stories? Well, I don't have many memorable stories. I do have a tremendous amount of respect. Uh, I got, I got to look at uh, Mike firsthand, not only in those events and watching him and his ability to gamble. Uh, he knew how to get under somebody's skin and make them say yes. He knew how to force somebody to say yes. Something that I never learned. I never really learned how to make somebody so mad that they could not say no. I watched him do it. I watched him do it more than once. Rudy Rez couldn't say no to that. There's no way he could. He could not. Uh, and then I got to watch, you know, a couple of the best in the world go at it for good money. And mostly uh, I was just a fan at, at watching uh, at, that, at that moment. When, when, when Mike was at his best, uh, I was not on the floor. I was in the back watching. And so I got to see everything, you know, sometimes when you're bowling, you don't see it all. I got to see all of it. And yeah, I have a tremendous respect for him and his ability to play lanes. Uh, people won't give him uh, near the credit that, that uh, he would have deserved have, had he done it on the biggest stage. That's the only thing is if you don't do it on the biggest stage, now you're playing the Hooters tour. Yeah, but he didn't want to do it on the biggest stage. He, I, that's his you know, choice. We were, but, we were all know. making enough money in those mega buck tournaments back then. You know, he has won. He's, I think, the only one that had won every mega buck tournament. Yeah, he so he has won hey, look, he, every he mega buck plenty tournament. of money. But uh, you know, I got, I got fame, not fortune. He got fortune, not fame. <laughs> oh, that that reminds me of something. Norm Duke, he he told me something one time. He said, "Yeah, Brad, you got to understand something." It's it, it's a heck of a lot more difficult to become famous than it is to become a millionaire. So yeah. now, you know, Brad, the hard part's you, over. <laughs> yeah. You and I became famous. Now we just got to figure out how to become a millionaire. Well, there's a lot more millionaires than there are famous people. So there you go. <laughs> it's right, got to be so easier. To, it's got to be easier, right? I'm exactly. I'm still trying. I'm still trying to figure the damn well, thing I'm, out. That's what I tell my wife all the time. I say, oh, honey, I got I got the first half. I got it pretty good. Now it's time for me to get the money. And uh, <laughs> she she looks at me like, you go, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. that road before. <laughs> what are you going to do, Norm? Oh, I'm going to do penny stocks, son. I'm going to day trade. <laughs> yeah. Now, look, <laughs> it's a lot harder to become a millionaire than I gave it credit early. <laughs> what else you got? Lori K. Little's asked this a few times. Lori, who? Norm about the birthday cake she made him in Detroit. Lori K. Lori wow. K. Whoever that is, Lori is K. Ended up asking, please talk about the birthday cake that I made you in Detroit. Yeah, it was just last year in the pro am, and I walk out and I'm introduced, and as they introduce me, they fire up the candles, and she set that cake right behind. Uh, uh, I guess we were on the low end down there, and of course I had just gotten through eating because it's a pro-am. So I looked at that cake and I thought, I don't think I have enough room. So I started passing the cake out to everybody. And I, you know what? There are tournaments that I bowl now that I will have four cups of coffee sitting behind my, you know this, you know this, you watch it. 
I'll have four cups of coffee sitting there. Because James from a year ago said, I remember this, Norm, brought it from Starbucks. Hey, I remember this, Norm, I brought you a Yeti. Hey, Norm, here's a fresh one from the, you know. How touching that is to know that people are thinking of you without you in the place. It's just incredible. Uh, the, 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 the benefits that I enjoy now that I didn't when I was 18 and no one knew of me, uh, you have to earn, uh, you know, your way to, to recognize ability. I mean, is that a word? <laughs> you have, you have to earn your way to, to be recognized. They just don't recognize you out of the gate. Right. After 40 years on the road now, the things that I get to enjoy sometimes like that birthday cake, people just don't realize, I think how much they touch us. I am just Norm, I'm just a person, just like, I'm still inside, I'm just a kid from the small town in Texas. And they did that for me, la la la. You know, it's funny you say that because that, that is one of the things that I, it, it, it's one of the things now that keeps me doing it. Um, you know, the, the, the people that I've met from around some of my best friends, literally my best friends in the world, uh, even over this last month of being shut down here at the Boeing Center. Believe it or not, those are the people that have been reaching out to me yes. and, and Michelle to be able to say, hey, listen, I'm thinking of you, man. How, how's it How's it, How's it? going? You know, the not, not any more reason than that they genuinely care. That's and, it. and, you know, you're right. When you go to a place that you've been to before, whether you have won there or not, some of the people that you have met there, that's really the only time you get right. to see them is when you go back into that area again. And hey, Brad, do you, do you know how jacked up you can get on four cups of coffee? <laughs> <laughs> I, I lay on. Where am I going? Where are my balls? <laughs> I don't. <yeah. laughs> Rick's got a question. Hey, um, what was the question you just had? We got we got two more questions, and then we'll go ahead and and uh, and let you go. What was this question right here? No, the one you just showed me. Yeah, does Norm still get nervous on TV? So, some yes. some people wants to know. Hey, do you still get nervous sure. on TV? Absolutely. I can answer that as well. Scared to I, death. Well, I I think for me, um, I think if I didn't get nervous. I would be more concerned about, wait a minute, why am I not nervous? I, I, I think the true experience that, that comes or the true wisdom that comes is, okay, how you deal with that nervousness. This is very normal. All right, we're getting ready to go to battle here. And how you deal with that nervousness, man, I, I look forward to that again. You know, I don't get to feel that very much. I, I haven't been one of the guys that's been a threat to make those TV shows. It's pretty tough to get out there against those reverent guys you know, as you know, Norm, it's amazing what they do. And and kudos to you for being able to just be the competitor that you are and you outsmart them. Do you realize how good you bowled those two weeks in a row where you went back to back? How how perfect your execution was? You know, I mean, really, you don't get those messengers flying across. You make the bad shot because of our ball speed being a little slower than theirs. You don't get those pins flying around to break up those splits. You had to bowl that much better execution wise, not only just to make the show, but then to pull it off on the show and win. Wow. You know, what a, what an accomplishment. What was it? Uh, now Rick Benoit has a question for you. So Rick, I didn't even realize Rick was on. I, I told him, I didn't know if you were going to try to get him hey, in or not. Rick what? is the hardest person I've ever met to try to impress. <laughs> You're not going to impress Rick Benoit. He's like, yep. <laughs> seen it before, Norm. Now let's get on with it. <laughs> okay, so what is Rick's question? All right, Rick's question. Let me find it. How hard is it to stay at home when you're so used to traveling? It's very easy. I'm comfortable here at home. We have a nice place. It's in Florida. We have great, great weather. I get an extended period of time with my family. And I don't have uh, a docket of things to do that's a full, you know, paper list long. Uh, it, no, I, I've got it really, really good in comparison to some folks that are struggling because they don't have a job and struggling because they do. 
struggling because they're essential and they do uh, struggling because they have six people. You know, I played golf today with uh, Joe Kay and he's got six people in his family living, living under the same roof six weeks now. And he just said, uh, I love them and, and we have a great time and I wouldn't trade it. But uh, there are certain times, certainly times that uh, you just got to go take a walk or you got to do something. Well, look, uh, as far as a com my uh, comparison to all the other people in the world, we are the lucky ones. And we pray so much that we can get this thing over with, that we can come out of it stronger even. Uh, and we believe that, you know. Uh, I know that, that uh, Brad and I, we, we have confidence in darn near anything. We think, we think that that turtle's going to beat that race every time. We think, ah, he's got a chance. I root for that turtle that every turtle. time. Uh, I look. I've seen uh, I've seen others that are struggling on a level that I can't comprehend. So uh, I, I just pray for everybody else more than us. We are fine. That's great. Are we good here? Yeah. Norm, uh, from the bottom of my heart, everything. That yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I know. But, you know, <laughs> and you right. hear it a lot. You hear it a lot. I, I'm sure you do. And believe it or not, everybody that says it to you, they really do mean it. So I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, and we'll do it again. Hey, we'll do it again. Hey, listen, we'll, we'll do it. That's yeah, Next Wednesday, you got a tea time we got to worry about? Uh, yeah. There's Josh. We got Josh back there. Josh wants Tell to Christina say. Tell Christina that she. I don't matter, but I'm in love with her already. Wait, hold on. You just knocked out your, uh, your oh, you got to say that all over again. You just covered your microphone. Okay, already. I said, tell Christine that I said, thank you so much. She took me all the way there. God love me. <laughs> She's oh. still watching. Yeah, she just ah. blew you a kiss. <laughs> all right, my friend. Hey, thank you. Um, to those of you that, that are still watching, don't forget, we got uh, EJ Tackett and myself uh, bowling a brand new format we're going to unveil. It's called the Clear the Deck format. And, and we're going to have uh, guaranteed frames. And then we got performance frames to where if you open in one of the performance frames, you are done for that game. So it's a neat little format we're going to be uh, unveiling to you on Monday at noon. So, Norm, if you're done. Hey, with do the you guys, do, do y'all allow hecklers? Can I come in and heckle the action? Tim, can we, can we can chime in, Norm? Awesome. Turn up my volume and let me say some things right about the downswing. All right, listen. If you're being serious, if you're if you're asking to be a part of that show uh, no, no. this coming week, uh, if you're being serious, then yeah. No, we can, I, we can I tell you what, it. I will be a part of your show. I'll watch it just like everybody else will. But I'll try my best to leave y'all to your own little. It's a level playing field right now. You don't want me to come in and put some bad mojo on people. Hey, how about this? Do you have access to a bowling center down there? I, no. Damn it. No, I got a garage I full of bowling ball balls though. I got. <laughs> so anyway, that would have it's been cool if you, if you have access to a bowling center down there, you could be on and you could bowl a match against EJ and I, virtual match like what we've been doing. It's actually been kind of cool. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to bowl more against EJ. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> I'm enjoying the time off, tell you the truth. Between him and Simo and uh, Belvana, yeah, I'm 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 doing just fine here in Florida. Yeah, and Kyle Troop and Tommy Jones and, and Marshall, Marshall Ken, Ken. and they, they did just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. You no, know, you, you didn't get... even mention Bill O'Neill or a left hander, and there's a couple of Butcher Simpsons out there that can just toy around with it too. Butcher Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Jacob Butcher is one of the nicest guys out there. On he is. He's, he's really absolutely nice. wonderful. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that when he throws the ball, we can any of us can explain it. I'm trying to work on. I, I'm going to try to implement his footwork into my approach. I think I can do it. You'll need a wheelchair. <laughs> 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 it just who wheel you up there and turn you sideways. You'll be fine. Exactly. Hey, listen, Norm, hey guys, thanks thank for coming on. Really, I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, we will. We'll try to reach out to you, have you on again for, for those yeah. of you that like it. Thanks Everybody, for uh, staying with us. Yeah, and bowl up a storm. Hey, look, those guys are doing exactly what we're doing right now. They're trying to, uh, to give you something that's entertaining in the bowling world outside of being able to throw it. We thank them so much. Uh, they're our family. Y'all know that. 
Thanks. Yeah, it, it, it's the it's the storm, the morning bowl that it goes live on nine o'clock Eastern or no, nine o'clock Mountain Time. It's 11 o'clock Eastern out here every morning. I'm actually going to be the guest on the morning bolt this Friday, awesome. uh, Friday awesome. morning. So, you know, um, I, I'm looking forward to it. They gave me the whole worksheet that I got to fill out to get all the questions so <laughs> that they can get all their questions answered. So we'll, we'll get that. And hopefully you guys can tune in onto the morning bolt uh, in the morning on Friday. Um, as well as every other day, but I'm going to be on uh, this Friday. And then we got Monday, EJ and I. And again, Norm, thank you so, so much. We appreciate it. Um, thank you, everybody that joined in. Pit Nation, you guys are awesome. Storm Nation, uh, everybody else. Thanks a lot. Take care. All right. We'll see you next time.